Ah, Joker. The movie that I can't stop talking about, even though I haven't seen it yet. All kidding and biases aside, this really is a fascinating movie to think about. It's a comic book movie based on possibly the world's most famous comic book supervillain, and yet it doesn't want to be treated like a comic book movie. It doesn't want to have anything to do with comic books at all, because this is trying to be a serious movie for serious adults man but it does seem to be working joker is getting a lot of positive reviews coming out of the venice film festival it even won the festival's top prize and joaquin phoenix is getting a lot of oscar buzz for his role as the titular character and no doubt just by looking at the trailers phoenix seems to be giving his all to the role really losing himself in the character and truly becoming the man who would eventually become the clown prince of crime when all is said and done, he might actually deserve his Oscar nomination, and it would actually fit into the nice tradition of actors who play the Joker having that performance being one of the best performances of their entire career. Except for one guy. Let's talk about that guy. When it comes to casting the role of the Joker, selecting the right actor can be just as important, if not more important, than selecting the actor to play Batman. Every actor who's ever played the Joker not only steals the show, but he goes on to define that character for an entire generation, across all mediums. So really, you're not just picking an actor to play a role, you're picking a person to become an icon. It's no wonder that many of the actors who have played the Joker in live action have been Academy Award winners, and in the case of Heath Ledger and maybe Joaquin Phoenix, Academy Award nominees, that won the top prize because of their performance as the Joker. Even in animation, picking the right actor to play the Joker is essential. For Batman the Animated Series, they initially hired Tim Curry. Now, in a perfect world, that makes total sense. But they fired Tim Curry for not fitting what the creators wanted the Joker to be. They fired Tim Curry, for God's sake. Kiss me, fat boy. <laughs> of course, we all know what happens next. Mark Hamill then came in and gave what many people, myself included, considered to be the defining performance of the Joker. But there were other voice actors who came after Mark Hamill that gave really good performances as the Joker, sometimes career-defining performances. Kevin Michael Richardson won an Emmy for playing the Joker on The Batman, the show that followed Batman the Animated Series. Troy Baker, who has played both Batman and the Joker, is more well-known for his performance as the Joker. And John DiMaggio has only played the Joker once in Under the Red Hood, but many fans consider it to be a great performance, myself included in that. And of course, when it comes to live action, every generation has their version of the Joker that they remember just as fondly, if not more so, than their era's Batman. You ask your dad, and Cesar Romero's Joker was the best thing on television. You ask your older brother, and Jack Nicholson's Joker was tops. You ask a goddamn millennial, and Heath Ledger's Joker to this day cannot be beat. And now, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker looks to be the Joker for this new generation, and possibly the Joker for the worst kind of people, but that's not this kind of show. The point is, when somebody plays the Joker, they're not just an actor playing the role. They're somebody who's becoming a much larger part of popular culture. Iconic, memorable, and oftentimes just as well loved, if not more so, than their associated Batman. Except for one guy. Jared Leto was selected to play the Joker in David Ayer's 2016 movie, Suicide Squad. That's a movie that, to be fair, has a lot of problems. It just does. One of those problems, maybe not the biggest, but certainly one of them, was their version of the Joker. Now on paper, this should have been a slam dunk. Jared Leto is an Academy Award winning actor who's been in a lot of movies that people genuinely enjoy. He's garnered a lot of praise for his performances in movies like Dallas Buyers Club, Chapter 27, Requiem for a Dream, My So-Called Life, Ask your older sister about that one. Not only that, but when he was cast as a Joker, there was a lot of talk about the behind the scenes stuff he used to do, going full method into the character and sending his castmates things like dead rats, boxes of used condoms, bullets, all sorts of weird stuff. Will Smith went as far as to say he never met Jared Leto. He only knew him as the Joker. And Viola Davis would carry around Mace with her in case he got a little too out of hand. That's 
dedication to your character no matter how you slice it. I remember when they posted pictures of Jared Leto cutting his long hair for the character. They even went as far as to shave his eyebrows for it. And I'm thinking, dude, the Joker has eyebrows. You don't need to go that far, but that's the dedication he had into getting into character for this role. He was going all in on it. So you can see why people would be genuinely excited for this casting choice. Jared Leto seemed to be the next great cinematic Joker. Except he wasn't. For one reason or another, he's not remembered very fondly, if at all. At best, Jared Leto's performance as the Joker is thought of as a punchline. But how did this happen? Why did this happen? Why did people turn their back on this particular version of the Joker? Well, I think things started to go south as soon as they released the very first image of Jared Leto in full Joker makeup. You know the one I'm talking about here. That's it. This doesn't really look like the Joker. White skin, red lips, green hair, purple gloves. Sure, those are all traditionally a part of the Joker's getup, but tattoos sure as hell aren't. And there's so many of them. Chief among them, of course, the infamous damage tattoo right there on his forehead. I would say that this is a little bit too on the nose, but a couple of inches and it literally would be. Things didn't really help all that much as Suicide Squad's release date drew closer and we got to see more of it. And for a character who is pretty much just a clown committing crimes, even Jared Leto looked ridiculous in this movie. He just looks so gaudy and sleazy. Past Jokers have looked either comically criminal, deceptively alluring, or downright menacing. Jared Leto's Joker looks like a SoundCloud rapper with a machine gun. I'll give him this, I'm pretty sure this movie predates the term SoundCloud rapper, so good on you for predicting that. And then the movie finally came out, and it wasn't all that great. And Jared Leto's much hyped performance seemed to be all for nothing. Mostly because he's barely in the movie. He's only really there to add flavor and context to Harley Quinn's story. But if you remove him from the picture, nothing really changes for Harley. She goes through the same character arc regardless. The Joker's presence doesn't really affect anyone else in the movie either. Also, the performance itself is just... weird. Like, it's not menacing or imposing at all. He's just kind of... annoying. And what the hell is up with his laugh? Seriously, why does the Joker sound like this? He's supposed to sound like this. <laughs> so you can sort of see why people are hesitant to bring up the Jared Leto version of the Joker from the movie alone, but I don't necessarily think just because Jared Leto was the Joker in a bad movie is the main reason why people are willing to forget him. I mean, Ben Affleck was Batman in two bad movies, but people still remember him very fondly. Like he'd been missing as Batman for like 10 years. It's only been like two, I think. Hell, Margot Robbie was Holly Quinn in the same bad movie as Jared Leto and people can't get enough of her. She's even coming back in Birds of Prey. I think the main reason why people are trying to move on from the Jared Leto Joker is because Warner Brothers is trying to move on from the Jared Leto Joker and the initial DC Cinematic Universe as a whole. After the first few movies didn't really set the world on fire, Warner Brothers quickly tried to course correct and stop trying to do Marvel-style cinematic universes and instead focus on smaller, more single-focused movies with these characters rather than big interconnected ones. I mean, that's part of the reason why we're getting a brand new Batman movie with a younger Batman. That's why we're getting a Taxi Driver remake, but with the Joker. Try and make people forget about what came before. But not everything that came before, mind you. We're still getting that Wonder Woman sequel. We're getting a sequel to Aquaman. Ezra Miller is still working on his Flash movie. God bless his little heart. So the DC Cinematic Universe isn't dead. It's just in a very weird state. And it is a state that still allegedly includes Jared Leto as the Joker. Allegedly, he's still set to appear in other movies. It's rumored he's going to appear in Birds of Prey as a cameo. He's rumored to have a Joker Harley Quinn spin-off movie where the two of them are in a romantic comedy. That sounds like a great idea. Hell, Jared Leto is even rumored to have his own solo Joker movie come out at some point in the future. But I think it's pretty safe to assume that 
none of that's gonna happen now. Maybe the Birds of Prey cameo, but nothing else. Jared Leto has said that he was unhappy that most of his performance was cut from Suicide Squad. He's reportedly very unhappy that Joaquin Phoenix is getting his own Joker movie and he isn't. And it's been three years since Suicide Squad anyway. I'm sure by now he's moved on to other things, like touring with 30 Seconds to Mars if they're still a band. I don't know, I gave up after the kill. Plus, in my personal opinion, we should probably get a new Joker anyway because we just got a brand new Batman. Jared Leto's Joker was great for Ben Affleck's Batman, but Robert Pattinson really deserves a Joker all of his own. It's a shame because Jared Leto really is a pretty good actor, and I think given a better script and better direction, he could have been a great Joker. Maybe not better than Heath Ledger, say, but certainly a Joker that people remember and remember fondly. But I guess it just wasn't meant to last. Jared Leto's Joker will instead go down in history as a weird time period where the Joker looked like a rich kid of Instagram. Meanwhile, at least Joaquin Phoenix is bringing back a more menacing, evil version of the Joker. And his laugh sounds pretty good, so he's got that going for him. <laughs> But what did you think about Jared Leto's performance as the Joker? Did you enjoy it? Did you think it was actually pretty good? Or did you think it was, well, bad? Let me know down below or anywhere on the internet. And of course, don't forget that we have new videos every Tuesday and Wednesday with Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern being Wolf Den Live. So subscribe to see all of that, like this video, and share it with a friend, a friend who always wants to talk like they have something to say, but nothing comes out when they move their lips, just a bunch of gibberish. And motherfuckers act like they forgot about Jared Leto's Joker. Thank you all for watching. I will see you next time.